get a grip on your student loans. How do you choose between the various available income-driven plans? Well, the first thing to do is figure out which ones you're eligible to choose between. That way you may be able to eliminate some of the options for, and consider the ones that are in fact possibilities for you. Do that by checking the disbursement dates for your federal student loans, and you can do that at the National Student Loan Data System. If you have older federal loans, you'll probably be choosing between the income-based repayment plan and the revised pay-as-you-earn plan. But if you have more recent loans from after October 1, 2007, you may be eligible for the pay-as-you-earn plan, in which case you would want to consider pay-as-you-earn and maybe the revised pay-as-you-earn plan. So how will you determine from amongst those options? Well, first check to see if a partial financial hardship is required. Some of the plans, all of the plans except the repay plan, make you show a need by showing a partial financial hardship. And that is determined by calculating the amount you would pay under a standard 10-year plan and seeing if it's more than you would pay under the income-driven plan. So it's very easy for most law graduates to meet this standard. Essentially, if you owe around as much on your student loans or not a lot less than what you earn in a year, then you have a partial financial hardship and can choose those plans. So once you've eliminated some of the options, focus on the plans you're eligible to choose, you should consider how income is calculated and how payments are set. Income is calculated for married people based on joint income under the revised pay-as-you-earn plan in every case. Under the other plans, income-based repayment and pay-as-you-earn, married people have the option of separating their income from their spouses. The only way you can do that is by filing a separate tax return. So if you want to make a payment based on your income alone and you're married, the revised pay-as-you-earn plan is not the best choice for you. So you'll also want to consider that pay-as-you-earn sets payments at 10% of discretionary income, whereas income-based repayment sets it higher at 15%, and repay also sets it at 10% of discretionary income. Forgiveness happens in as early as 20 years from pay-as-you-earn, 25 years under the other plans, and they're all eligible for public service loan forgiveness. So mind the details and get some more information to choose between the various income-driven plans that are available to you. For more information and a consultation, contact us.